I'm currently in California in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm here for holidays and also for a couple of photo shootings. San Francisco is most of the time foggy, especially in the morning and the evening. The fog comes and goes. Sometimes you get clear skies, but this particular day I'm talking about here in this video, it was a very hazy day. And I was crossing Golden Gate Bridge and traveling over to uh, Golden Gate National Park. And on the right hand side here you see Sausalito, which is a beautiful small village where a lot of people spend their spare time over the weekends. And there is one spot just at the shore where you get a perfect view towards part of San Francisco, including Alcatraz. Just before I started my trip to San Francisco, I installed a new firmware of my Phase 1 XF IQ4. So I posted videos before on my channel on the IQ4. It's a 150 megapixel medium format sensor, perfect image quality, but the firmware when I uh, did my shootings in Dubai over Christmas was still premature. Now everything is fixed, the firmware works perfectly and it also has a few new features included. One of the most interesting new features is automated frame averaging. And automated frame averaging is an algorithm which is now incorporated into the camera body of the IQ4 combined with the XF, where you can actually take multiple shots and then in camera they will be combined into one single IQ RAW file. So it saves a lot of memory because typically you would have to do this by yourself, take all the single frames one by one, import them into Capture One, use a stacking algorithm to get the exposures averaged out, and then you're good to go. Here it's all processed in camera, so you only use the memory and the capacity for one single IIQ RAW file, and that comes in nice and handy. The effect you get is you can take very long exposures without a neutral density filter, and of course it also reduces random noise on the single frames because they cancel out in the averaging algorithm. So let's just have a look around here where I am. Welcome to Sausalito Bay. Uh, this is the place where my Phase 1 is already mounted on my tripod. And it is a hazy day. You do not see it on, let's say, closer distances, but you see it if you go to far horizons. And uh, I turn around a little more to give you a view on the mountains and now you see it, even on the mountains which are not far away, it is hazy. And if you know, here by the way is my face one mounted on the tripod, if you know, look at the horizon and see San Francisco, and I zoom in two times on my iPhone for a moment, it is hazy, it will not be the image quality I want to have for that shooting. But what can I lose? So uh, let's just try out the frame averaging feature and let's see if there's anything this improves in my situation. And if not, you know, then I come back again to this place, do another shooting and uh, at least then I tried out this uh, frame averaging feature. So let's turn our full attention to the phase one. What I'm going to do will not be easy. With one hand I will operate my phase one. With the other hand I will operate the iPhone, but I hope it will do the trick. So apologies for shakes and moves, but hopefully I can demonstrate the concept. So I'm choosing here an ISO of 50. I'm shooting with an aperture of f11 and 1 over 250 seconds of exposure time. I have a self time of 10 seconds and this is now counting down and then taking the shot. So waiting this to be completed and here we go. So let's go into the preview function of the IQ4, pushing the button, choosing full, uh, full size preview zooming in 100% and you see it's amazing what the Schneider Kreuznach lens with 80 mm focal length is doing here on the medium format sensor but clearly it's hazy. So uh, let's see what we get with uh, the uh, frame averaging feature now in the next shot. For automated frame averaging you swipe the touch screen from the right to the left hand side and push on that symbol and then you see the parameters here. Let's just start the countdown and then it calculates the number of frames. So here we want to take a total time of 30 seconds, so 30 seconds exposure time, which is long for a bright day. Uh, shutter speed is 1 over 320 seconds, and you see on the right hand side here, just on top of the progress bar, the number of frames taken in this particular shot will be 137, which uh, is something I'm going to explain later in the video, but it is very simple to do the math yourself. And then the progress bar shows you uh, how this is progressing over time. And since we have a 30 second exposure on a bright day, the ocean with its waves should actually be calm and smooth and silky, like if I would have applied a neutral density filter to that image. So preview. Preview is here. This is, I think, still the image from before. And here is the 
average frames, 137 frames average. Look at the skyline, I think it is a bit better than what we had on a single shot, but look at the water compared to what we had before here. So this is the normal shot and then if we swipe back this is the shot with the neutral density like appearance on the water. So very nice feature. Let's also look at the pictures in post and briefly explain the math behind the number of frames. So I darkened the room here a little bit to get the reflections away from the display of the iQ4. The reflection you see in the middle here is the camera lens of my iPhone and um, just ignore that for a moment. What I wanted to demonstrate is a little bit how it works in the interplay between number of frames taken in automated frame averaging in comparison to your other parameters in the so-called light triangle when we talk about ISO, aperture and shutter speed. And my clear advice is take your exposure and meter light in a normal shooting environment before you go into frame averaging because you want to be sure that something meaningful is coming out of that composition of many, many frames. And uh, that's the way I did it in San Francisco and uh, that's the way you should do it. And I'm here in manual mode, so I have one over hundreds of a second. I have an aperture of 11 and an ISO of 50. And now if I wanna go into frame averaging, swipe from the right hand side to the left hand side and open that menu. And then just here on that symbol, you come into frame averaging. So the best way to illustrate the interplay between the parameters of your, let's call it again the light triangle where you have uh, exposure time or shutter speed, aperture and uh, ISO. Uh, in relation to the number of frames taken, which is 275. So to understand best the relationship between uh, those two sides here, left hand side, right hand side, is if we test out on the shutter speed what the limit is. So we are going now all the way up and then it stops going up at two seconds. And I found this out accidentally in uh, San Francisco during a shooting that two seconds is the maximum, the limit you can have when you average frames. Now, if you look at this uh, for a moment, let's now go for simplicity down to one minute. And then the math is very simple. This is your maximum exposure time, two seconds. You want to have a one minute image in the averaged image at the very end. And one minute is 60 seconds divided by two seconds per frame gives, of course, 30 frames. So here the math is very simple. If we go now up to two minutes, then of course it doubles. It needs 60 frames. And this simple law of scaling continues if we are at four minutes, or let's go to five minutes. Five minutes means 60 seconds times five means 300 seconds divided by two seconds per frame gives 150 frames. And then there is no gap between the single shots. Immediately one after another, the shot will be taken, two second exposure, two second exposure, two second exposure, and so on. So there is no gap between it. Now, if we go down now and decrease our exposure time, then the number of frames goes up. So if we do the math now, we have five minutes, 300 seconds divided by one second per shot is still 300 frames. So, so far the math is still working. Now, if we go further down, let's go to one tenth of a second, the math is no longer working. And you saw it probably here when I pushed the minus sign here, that the number of frames is no longer sticking to that rule of scale. And that means the gap between the shots is increasing now. So it takes an exposure of one over tenth of a second, it waits a moment and it takes another shot. And it does this 689 times because that's the number of frames and it fills it, I guess, linearly distributed or evenly into a five minute period, which is the total time for the final average image we want to have. By the way, in the updated version of the manual on the Phase 1 XF IQ4, you also find some hints how this is working in terms of frame averaging and what the gaps are and what the meaning of them is. So I'm now in Capture 1. I will briefly uh, show you the two pictures 
coming out from that shooting. So we are looking here at part of the skyline of San Francisco. Here's Alcatraz Island. I'm standing somewhere here, if you follow my mouse pointer, at the bottom at the waterfront in Sausalito. And uh, I want to show the two shots which came out. The normal shot over the water towards the skyline and the shot with uh, frame averaging with that new feature on my IQ4 digital back. And if you look at the uh, metadata here, we have the huge resolution, we have the format of the RAW file here. This time with the new firmware, it shows that this is the extended IIQ. And this is something which was not showing up in the metadata in my shooting half a year ago in Dubai. So this is now also fixed. You see here the lens I used. I mentioned that before, Schneider Kreuznach, 80 millimeters. Widest open aperture is 2.8. And you see here the shooting parameters. So almost what you saw before when I tried this little demo with one hand on my iPhone and one hand on the Phase 1. ISO 50, follow noise, 1 over 250 seconds as a shutter speed and an aperture of, of 11. So let's look at that picture for a moment. So I'm in a magnifying tool here. I'm at 200%. So you see this here and we can just zoom in. Uh, it should be a low noise image based on an ISO of 50 and you see it on the water, very nice, very clean, very nice picture, uh, despite the fact that it was a hazy day. Let's look at Alcatraz first, and you see Alcatraz here with the tower and the buildings, the former prison. It was hard to escape. I visited Alcatraz once in the past, and it's an impressive experience, but uh, also full of tourists, of course, and it's, I think, a mixed experience you have when you go there with the water taxi and have a visit. So what you see here is it's not really sharp and uh, it's also not clean and there is also a lot of noise. It's not what people are used to when I show pictures taken with my IQ4 and the reason is that it was a hazy day. And there is no way you get haziness away even with the best optics because the light will pass through that, let's call it uh, fog or haze and it will distort the picture before it ends up on your sensor. So there's nothing we can do here. Uh, the same applies to the skyline. If we look at the skyline here and the skyscrapers, it's okay-ish. You see here, I think that's the Bay Bridge here in, uh, in, in the, on the horizon you see here. It's okay-ish and probably any other camera would have produced even worse images. But in particular, if you look at the windows, it's not clean, it's not sharp, it's a noisy picture. It's nothing you can sell or you show off to your friends. And that's, of course, due to the weather conditions here. It's not the fault of the camera. Actually, let's look into here. Same situation. In particular, if you look at the windows, at the balconies, you get a lot of detail, but it's distorted because the light passes through that air, which is hazy or foggy. If we now go to the picture, which was taken with frame averaging, the first thing uh, which is eye-catching here is the smooth, silky water. That's very nice. I like that a lot. If you compare those two pictures, just from the image impression, that one here is the one which gives you peace in your mind. It brings you down. It is a calm picture. There is no movement. The ocean is silent and calm. And it looks, I think, much better if you have this largely printed on a wall. Of course, there is also haziness here. The haziness is not hexed away by the frame averaging. But uh, if we go into the details here, it looks much better. In particular, if you look at the tower here or the windows, compare this, keep it in mind, bear it in mind for a moment. Let's switch to the normal shot here. And if you compare that, it's a big difference. In particular, look here, look at that one and look at the tower. Now let's go back to the frame averaged image. And then this looks much better, I think. At least some extent, to some extent, it was helping that we used frame averaging. Let's look now at the skyline. I think also the skyline looks better, in particular on that building here. It's a noise reduction which happened here. So the haziness is not going away. It's still clear that the horizon has no clear skies and no clear air, but the noise is gone away. And the windows are clean. It's much sharper, that picture, and I think it's much better. Let's take this image, uh, this image crop here for a moment and let's go back to the normal picture. And then you clearly see it. It's very much eye-catching. You know, keep that in mind. Go back to the frame average picture. 
much much better sharper less noise and actually a quite acceptable result given the weather conditions I had on that day in Sausalito. Alright, the last thing I want to mention is if you go into the metadata here, the IPTC section, it also gives you that hint that this is an overall 30 second exposure image and the algorithm applied is automated frame average. I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like my channel, please subscribe. If you like that video in particular, I would be happy for a thumbs up from your side. And stay tuned because there will be another video coming soon uh, on a few other shots I want to share with people on YouTube taken with the Phase 1 IQ4 over San Francisco Bay Area shot from Hawk Hill, which is the opposite side of Golden Gate Bridge in the National Park and also from Golden Gate Bridge Park. And I think it again will prove that this is probably the best camera in the world. Thanks again for watching, stay tuned, see you soon.